Hi, my name's Rachel, and welcome to another video of mine. Today I am wearing my A Day to Remember shirt because we talked about this in another video, and I said, by the way, here's the shirt. Fuck you from Florida. Can you see it? God, this is an awkward angle. To somebody in my comments that I would wear it. I'm wearing it. It says A Day to Remember on it. On the back it says, fuck you from Florida. It could have just said, fuck Florida, and that would have been, that would have been fine too. <laughs> All right, hi, my name's Rachel, and today we're doing another Authors Behaving Badly. Today's author is Sarah Dessen, who caused a whole mess in 2019. There was Twitter uproar. So many authors were involved. It was a whole mess and a half. Oh, I forgot to turn my fan off. And we are going to talk about all of that today. But first, I have to say thank you for being a friend to my patrons. First to those paying my therapy bills, Eric, Jill, Lex, Molly, SJ, and Zachary. Thank you for being a friend. And as always, to my potato starch Marxists, Aiden, Allison, Brittany, Carlin, Caitlin, Celia, Chris, CJ, Corey, Diet Goth, Abby, Eden, Elise, Aaron, Gracie, Horror Goose, Jen, Jillian, Jules, Kate, Katie O, Kylie, Marcella, Morgan R, Morgan W, Nicole, Paige, Ray, Reba, Peggy, Sammy, Sarah, Shannon, and Sean. I got them all. Thank you for being a friend. Okay, so the year was 2019. I was on Twitter at this time. Somehow I missed all of this. I had just joined this whole book corner of the internet. Uh, I was on Twitter and yet somehow I missed this whole fucking mess on Twitter in 2019, in November 2019 specifically. I don't know, I guess the USians were like just really just fucking hungry. Thanksgiving was a, a week or so away and we were just apparently so hangry that we just had a whole mess for no reason. Also, I am once again asking Monster Energy to you know, do the thing and sponsor me. So Sarah Dessen is the author of a bunch of romances, including the rest of the story, which I'm going to be honest, is the only covers of her, a cover of hers that I recognize. I can't name you another Sarah Dessen book. That's it. That's all I got. She's been on the New York Times bestseller list multiple times and won the Margaret E, Margaret A, rather Edwards award for her significant and lasting contribution to young adult literature in 2017. In 2019, she tweets this. Authors are real people. We put our heart and soul into the stories we write, often because it is literally how we survive in this world. I'm having a really hard time right now, and this is just mean and cruel. I hope you, it made you feel good. And all it is is this picture with a name scratched out of what is clearly an article. And all the picture said was, during her junior year, name scribbled out said she fought hard against a Sarah Dessen book being selected. She's fine for teen girls, the 27 17 Northern graduate said. Of course she left in part of the name of the university, but definitely not up to the level of common read. So I became involved simply so I could stop them from ever choosing Sarah Dessen. Now, first of all, is this sort of a dig at teen girls and what they like to read and how teen girls typically, we've talked about this before, how we sort of degrade what women and girls like to uh, consume in media, particularly teen girls? Sure, we can have a conversation about that. But but this, what, that's not what Sarah was trying to do here. Uh, Sarah was feeling bad for herself and decided to post this to get sympathy. And she did. Uh, an author Twitter was in a fucking kerfuffle over this, okay? People came out and were like, literally fuck that raggedy ass fucking bitch, uh, quote from Danielle Clayton. Other supported supporters included Roxanne Gay, N.K. Jemison, Jodi Bacolt, Tiffany D. Jackson, Siobhan Vivian, Angie Thomas, so Siobhan says, fuck that fucking bitch. Tiffany D. Jackson responds with ditto. Sarah responded to the original tweet from Siobhan saying, I love you. And Danielle Clayton comes in with, fuck that raggedy ass fucking bitch. Just like right from the jump, people were like, ooh, not our Sarah. It wasn't just three authors. There were, as I said, so many involved in this. Ruta Sepetes said, the level of spite and cruelty, no words, but here are my words and the words of so many others. Sarah, you are brilliant, beautiful, and beloved by millions. The world is a better place because you and your books are in them. You have literally saved lives. Hashtag higher purpose. Uh, I don't know who Heather and Jessica is, 
but presumably an author. This person has no idea what she's even talking about, Sarah. You are a beautiful and massively skilled writer, a YA fucking icon, and an incredibly generous and thoughtful person who is deeply loved. People cherish your books, and I will fight this person for you. Sarah Watson, this stinks of that horrible Slate article about why adults shouldn't read YA. Okay, fine, you do you. Go read Infinite Jest and feel intellectually superior about it but let everyone else read what they love and what speaks to them. Listen, Sarah Watson, I agree with you, but um, y'all were swindled by Sarah Dessen into giving her, you know, uh, pats on the back when she didn't need them at the time. This was punching down. Alwyn Hamilton just chiming in to say, I hope you know your books have meant so much to so many of us, even those who didn't read you as teen girls but in our 20s, when we still felt like we were coming of age and the pettiness of this article only reflects badly on the writer of it. That there was nothing wrong with the article. There was nothing wrong with it. We'll get there in a minute. So Sarah had a bunch of people defending her against two sentences in which somebody basically was just like, I don't like her books. Oh no! And it's true that teen girls experiences are seen as less than and YA books in general, particularly, you know, fiction wrote, written for the YA audience is not given consideration. It is demeaned in every, and condescended to at every turn. I see this all the time. I see it in my own comments section and I have to put a stop to it. I see it in tweets to me and I have to put a stop to it. It's very frustrating. Roxanne Gay, uh, in talking about this, told the Washington Post in an email when she was contacted about this whole thing, saying, the underlying frustration is that teenage girls and their opinions and preferences are all too often demeaned and dismissed. For YA writers who, whose audience is comprised of a significant number of young women, such disparagement hits close to home and, as you might expect, inspires defensiveness. Yes, but... Sarah herself did not start that conversation. Sarah basically just said, this hurts my feeling. And I think that needs to be stated that Sarah Dessen swindled, swindled all of you. Here's what actually happened. Every year, Northern State University makes a list of books for their common read program. And this book, this list of books is picked by staff, community, students, okay? And the book is mandatory for every first year student to read. So it is curriculum. And the author or somebody affiliated with the book comes to speak, right? So if it's a nonfiction, then so for instance, Sarah Dessen might have come to speak if her book Saint Anything back in 2016 when it was on the list had been picked. But a student who was a junior, Brooke Nelson, whose name was scratched out by Sarah, but that was the name in the article, said that she didn't think that Sarah Dessen's work Saint Anything should be picked. And the article says that what she wanted them to pick was Brian Stevenson's book Just Mercy, with, which is nonfiction. It is a memoir that talks about a black man who was wrongly sentenced to death in the 1980s for a murder that he was not, the, the he didn't commit the murder. So in 2016, they did end up picking uh, Just Mercy. Anthony Ray Hinton, the person who was uh, convicted of this murder that Brian Stevenson did this memoir about, that he was the lawyer for that he was able to get taken off death row. Anthony Hinton came to speak uh, at the college. And I think that, listen, I understand fully that YA gets shat on. I do. I think that you can get anything. I think that you can get something out of any book that you read. I think that YA as a genre is just as important and valid and full of important stories and conversations as adult books and as middle grade books. I think that all it has to do with is the audience is having a conversation that is age appropriate for the audience so that the audience can retain that information and understand that information. That's really the only difference. It's not that you are a higher intellect if you read adult. It is that you are reading a book that is age appropriate for your level of understanding. That's really it. So I don't think that anybody who, I don't think that I am more intelligent than my 11 year old niece because I am older. I think that she is age appropriate level of intelligence for her and I am age appropriate level of intelligence for me and I think 16 year olds are age appropriate levels of intelligence for themselves and then reading by why why books make sense like that's really all it is it's not a genre it's an age group and the fact that we are ageist in that way is is really fucking weird and gross and just speaks to like how little we care about human development anyway <clears throat> that was a tangent okay so they try to have like a variety in this common read program that the college does uh, at one time they picked Ernest Klein's book ready 
Ready Player One, yikes, but they didn't want to do another, you know, fiction book targeted at YA. They wanted to do something different in 2016. In 2013, the selection was The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. So they tried to do a variety, right? And that's great. And I think that if I were in college, personally, I would want to do something with a nonfiction so that I could, because I would probably be in college for if I were to go to college, which I'm not going to, and I didn't, uh, I would want to go for something to do with like human rights. So that would have interested me more than reading Sarah Dessen's book and talking about it for the Common Read program. But I don't think, I think that the way that Brooke Nelson worded it was kind of like iffy, but I think that in the context Context, what Sarah Dessen did to Brooke Nelson, weaponizing her enormous following by taking Brooke Nelson's quote out of the full context of the article, was infinitely more disgusting than Brooke Nelson kind of, kind of, sort of saying, oh, I don't really like, you know, YA romances written for teen girls. Like, yeah, I'm more mad at Sarah. Sorry. <laughs> so she wanted Just Mercy to be the book pick, and she said, you know, she's, Sarah Dessen is fine for teen girls but she's not up to the level of common read. She's a student at the university. She's the one paying for the education. So if she feels that way, I feel like that's valid. Sarah left out this important context and caused pointed vitriol towards the student. Like, and first of all, why Sarah? Are you looking at an article in the year 2019? Why are you looking at an article where you are briefly mentioned from 2016? Why are you looking at a three-year-old article about yourself? And second of all, you did not need to screenshot it. You didn't. You could have facilitated a conversation about talking about how people disparage YA as an age group in all forms of media. You could have facilitated that conversation without screenshotting an article out of context and then weaponizing your following against somebody. And Angie Thomas was very upset with the university and her book had actually been Common Reads 2018 pick. And so she tweeted at the university saying, don't make any of my books your common reads since my demographic is beneath you. And after this, Justin Phrase, the university's director of communications authored an apology tweet and he later told Vulture in an article he decided to weigh in because it became clear to him that the university would not walk away from the battle unscathed and one significant factor he said was that the reigning queen of YA Angie Thomas tweeted at the university saying not to use any of her books since her demographic is beneath you and if you ask me I think that this was like better than Sarah Dessen could have asked for she was was like getting so much support. She was so happy. She's like, you guys, your kind words have lifted me up today. I have so much to figure out always and still, but knowing all those words on pages meant something to so many people. It's humbling and an honor. Thank you. Okay, so that was on the 12th, right? And this took off for a, for a few days. This was like a three day long thing. And initially people were really supportive of Dustin, particularly in the author community. Well then Brooke Nelson, the person who was in the, you know, the Common Read program said that thing about Sarah Dessett's books, wrote Vulture saying, my quote was taken out of context. I, she said, I followed my evaluation of Sarah Dessett's work with a rationale advocating for three other books I felt addressed relevant social issues. Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson, Breath Eyes Memory by Edwidge Danticat, and When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi. And suddenly a bunch of people were like, I'm on Nelson's side. They were pretty pissed at a lot of the authors for jumping on the Brooke Nelson hate train. They were saying they were going to boycott books. They were pissed at Dessen's fans because apparently Nelson was driven off of Twitter by this. One account tweeted the entire kerfuffle from like top to bottom, attaching all of the screenshots with all of the authors who were involved and used the hashtag, hashtag who not to read. And a previous tweet from Neil Gaiman, the author of The Sandman, where he was actually, this is so funny, he was actually telling off Elon Musk for weaponizing his following and my god what a timely uh point in 
time to for me to be making this video and talking about this the week that Elon Musk took over Twitter and is being um well if I could describe his behavior it would be I think he acts like more of a toddler than my actual three and a half year old <clears throat> just a timely point in time for me to be making this video anyways Neil Gaiman's tweet said it's cause and effect if you have lots of followers and you publicly call someone out you will wittingly or unwittingly set hundreds or thousands of people on them it's not about the rightness or wrongness of your cause it's about not being a dick talking about the responsibility that people have when they have large followings to not weaponize those followings this is something that I think about a lot because now I have kind of a, a big enough following where I have to like worry about that and I do so I try to be very careful and very intentional about what I say okay so somebody takes this tweet from Neil and says Sarah Dyson complaining publicly was a mistake people will dislike your books for bad reasons but that's how it goes when you have many followers it comes with responsibility Neil gets it right here honestly watching Jodi Picoult and Jennifer Weiner Weiner what is her last name turn their star power and their audience against a regular person quoted in a short article in a tiny newspaper at a small university is really ugly and disheartening Jodi Picoult what the fuck decided to chime in saying I urge you to read the original tweet I didn't even mention that that dissenter I validated Sarah's work and talked about the problematic way women's stories are discounted period that is systemic and well worth discussion so is the responsibility of having a large following both are I think she was just trying to like get get people off her back but I think that she should have validated that both of those conversations are worth having and should have validated the fact that any vitriol that came Brooke Nelson's way was unwarranted Jennifer Weiner Weiner I don't know who that is even short articles about tiny universities can reinforce systemic discrimination and double standards in which women's voices and stories are discounted I have zero regrets about using my platform to call it out here's the thing you could have done so without engaging in uh, bullying Brooke Nelson you could have done so by simply stating that without engaging with Sarah Dessen's tweet you just don't want to be accountable listen we all fuck up on the internet sometimes what matters is saying oh I did do that I'm sorry about that uh, a bunch of people deleted their tweets but Siobhan <laughs> was like pretty much like uh, Sarah's my actual in real life friend and I'm gonna double down <laughs> she said stuff like Sarah is my IRL friend for more than 10 years sorry Tiffany G Jackson quotes this by saying girl Siobhan is low-key is a low-key thug when it comes to friends like Sarah Dessen I'm just sitting here back here like uh, uses the 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 New York meme where it's like you should have just sat there and ate your food and Siobhan answers by saying and you know what I've missed opportunities in the past to stand up for friends and I'm not going to let it happen again friends are friends that interview comment was fucking mean and I really don't care what someone else thinks of my response it was for Sarah if it was for Sarah then you could have done it in DMs that's it that's my tweet <laughs> whereas Roxanne Gay saw oh this was kind of fucked up and out of context good for Roxanne Gay we do not agree often well that's not true we absolutely disagree on a few key things like what constitutes sexual assault um, and I'm still kind of salty at her for that also salty with her about not liking uh, trigger warnings I don't understand her take on that anyway uh, me and Roxanne Gay don't always agree but we agree here I absolutely messed up when I responded to Dustin's tweet I didn't read the article just the screenshot I related to a fellow author feeling the sting of criticism I had no idea the young woman was not anonymous or was being harassed I apologize for my part in all this I will definitely do better and be m more mindful moving forward I made a mistake yes that's it that's all the rest of them needed to say Roxanne Gay nailed it why didn't the rest of y'all just nail it it was so easy just say sorry Celeste Ng who had also got said something retweeted saying same I'm retweeting Roxanne because as always she says it better than I can I wanted to express sympathy to a fellow author which I still feel but absolutely do not support anyone targeting or harassing the woman involved I apologize for my part in this as well go Celeste NK Jemison who had also chimed in said something else that needs to be said regarding the dusting effect just an affair I need to apologize to Nelson I have nothing but sympathy for her as the young woman at the center of all this I've been harassed it's hurtful and scary if I contributed to that in any way I'm sorry once again NK Jemison being the fucking queen Danielle Clayton decided to take a different approach and said that people were mad at her because she used the word bitch and she said do white women just not like the word bitch have they not reclaimed it black women use it in a lot of ways it's one of my favorite words legit top 10 someone helped me explain or someone help explain so 
I don't know if she actually wanted a white woman's opinion. I can give mine. Uh, I do call my friends bitch. Like, if my friend, you know, says, oh, I just, um, I, I just, uh, paid off my student loans. I'm like, bitch, I'm so proud of you. But <laughs> if somebody says to me, fuck you, you raggedy ass fucking bitch, um, that's a little bit different of a context. <laughs> I feel like that's obvious. I, I'm more annoyed at Siobhan for being like, well, Sarah's my friend and I have to stick up for her. You could have in DMs where you wouldn't have been loud and wrong in public. <laughs> Anyway, the whole Daniel Clayton thing, people were talking about it, and uh, basically it just, <laughs> it turned into like talking about the word bitch being used when it's like, that wasn't really the point. This tweet from Olivia A. Cole says, I'm just catching up on this, but my immediate reaction is many white women have no problem with the word bitch when they're cosplaying sassy black women, but have issues when actual black women say it. Uh, that's true. I mean, she's not wrong. Uh, that wasn't really what was happening here, I don't think, but I, I, I agree that that is often a problem. Another author says, wait, why are we arguing about this? Who did what? Olivier Cole, from what I understand, white women are doing racist ass finger wagging at Danielle for using the word bitches, saying it's unfeminist. And then somebody disagreed, jumped in saying, um, she jumped in and called someone a raggedy ass bitch for just for not liking Sarah Dessen. Danielle was just as much of, as a petty bully as Siobhan and all of the other white women. Now isn't the time to pull the race card. I, I think that it's, it's important that they pointed out that Siobhan was being a petty bully. That's, I, again, Danielle can do whatever. I'm more concerned with how, how Siobhan doubled down and then virtue signaled as, as if she was like, I'm just helping my friend. Like that is, is, uh, the real ick here. That's the real ick. Sarah Dessen up to this point was, was saying things like, woo boy, lesson learned and deleting another tweet. Woo boy, gone, not worth it. Godspeed woman who feels so strongly about my books. I hope you have a good day. Deleting tweets, a current mood, Stanley from the office. But it's like, you started this. You did this. You created this kerfuffle. And then, two days later, something important I'd like to say. Two days ago, I just chose to post a screenshot of a quote from a newspaper article that was quir critical of my books. That, that, that. I would like context as to why you were name searching yourself and reading articles from three years ago. I would like to know that. Anyway, I want to apologize to the person who was quoted. I'm sorry. Like most authors, I hear all the time from people who don't like my work. It's part of the job. With a platform and a following, I have a responsibility to be aware of what I put out there. I know this apology doesn't change what happened, but I am truly really sorry. Moving forward, I'll do better. Thanks for listening, Sarah. Again, I'd like to know why you're name searching yourself and if you do that often. And two, I would like to know if you are going to tell your friend, Siobhan, to back the fuck off. <laughs> like, uh, every time that an author fucks up, and I'm not going to name names because I feel like it's pretty obvious who I'm talking about at this point, but it seems like other authors, be they trad pub or indie, come out and they're like, yes, we support you, even though you're wrong. And then readers come out and they're like, hey, no, <laughs> no. And they kind of like flick them away like little flies at first, but then like we come in and we're like, hey, here is a whole boatload of us saying this is not cool behavior what the fuck and then it's only then that they're willing to apologize which makes me feel like all of those people who had valid points before that you were flicking away like annoying little gnats I just feel like that that's really dehumanizing to them because they made the same point but you didn't want to hear it until you realized that enough people were saying it which makes me think you don't care so I don't like that so when this person in the comments were response to Sarah saying too little too late. I'm in agreement. Uh, you didn't care until you realized that this would probably affect your book sales. That's, that's what I think. Anyway, I, um, probably won't read any Sarah Dessen books. <laughs> Not that I'm her target audience. I just don't read a lot of romance. Again, no shade to those who do, it's just not my typical genre. Uh, there are people better at reviewing those than I am, but um, if I were a consumer, I wouldn't want to put any dollars in her pocket because I don't feel that she deserves my cash. Anyway, that's the Sarah Dessen drama. Uh, what a fucking mess, am I right? What a fucking mess. So many authors, 
so many authors. There was a website that had like a whole list of authors who supported her and I was like, damn, look at you, just putting in work. But I think that anybody who uh, apologized did the right thing and I super support, I, I super appreciate people like Roxane Gay spelling it out and saying exactly, you know, I went wrong here, I won't do it again. Good, awesome, thank you. Thank you for acknowledging that platforms come with responsibility and encouraging your platform and your follow, or encouraging anybody who follows you on your platform to, uh, you know, do research before supporting uh, an author who says, oh, I'm being bullied. Hold up. <laughs> Let's read the full article first before we, before we start attacking a random college student in Florida. She has to live in Florida. Isn't that tough enough? Okay, thanks so much for watching. Leave your comments and questions down below. Let me know if you uh, are a fan of Sarah Dessen's books. I couldn't tell you a single thing about them. I don't even know anything about them from like, like, like engaging with other, you know, readers. I've never heard a single thing about a Sarah Dessen book, honest to God. Like, you know how you know, like, even if you haven't read Fifty Shades of Grey, you know, like, some basic facts about Fifty Shades. I couldn't tell you a single basic fact about a Sarah Dessen book. So apparently she's just not on my radar whatsoever. Anyway, let me know if you're a reader of hers, or if not, or if this made you stop being a reader of hers, if you were there when this happened. Thoughts, questions, comments down below. You can check out my Patreon, and uh, let me know who you want me to do next for Authors Behaving Badly. Okay? Okay. Oh, wait, quick note. Okay, I know a few people have said, hey, do Sarah J Mass. I can't. Here's the thing about these videos. They really only work if there's receipts, and there's nothing for me to, like, pull up that Sarah has said herself that I can have a conversation about. There's the whole her grandma lives in Israel and she went on a birthright trip. That That's it. Like there's like one article. And then there's her books which are kind of shitty. There's not enough material. Sarah doesn't talk enough on the internet for me to make a video. I, I would if there were enough material. Who I can do because she never shuts the fuck up on the internet. Who I can do if you would like me to is JK Rowling. Am I putting myself in a position where the turfs are going to come from my neck? Yes. But what else is new? I'm also planning on doing Rin Chupeco, but I actually had to do this video first before I could do Rin Chupeco. Okay? Okay. Anyway, there was that. That was this. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>